Hi, and welcome back to the never-ending journey of uh, finding Nicholas Perfect Laptop. Sadly, I have not found it yet, but I do have something to show you that gets pretty close. This is the Lenovo Duet 5. It's out of stock, so don't rush to buy it, but you can get one for a few hundred bucks on eBay. I have mentioned this device previously on this channel, but I have some new updates about it. So let's talk software. This thing ships with Chrome OS out of the box, which is a deal breaker. I could not use it for actual productivity tasks or work, which is why I would only ever bring it out to watch movies and maybe write some stories. That's it. However, I was contacted on Telegram by a user called uh, Jules Bear. I'm sorry if that's how, not how it's pronounced, who explained to me that I could run native Linux on the Duet, and he assured me that it was going to be very easy and almost everything working out of the box. Needless to say, knowing how these things go, I did not believe him. And I was wrong. So the first step was to enter developer mode, which you can do from the bootloader. This was quite easy, but it does trigger a complete factory reset. That's fine by us, since we'll replace Chrome OS with Linux anyway. Then I downloaded the post-market OS image for my device, code named Trogdor. This was the hardest pro step in the process, as the download kept failing due to connectivity issue, I guess, and I had to repeat it multiple times. But when I finally had the correct checksum on the image, I flashed a USB stick, connected it to the Duet, selected boot from external drive, and voila, Plasma... Sorry? <laughs> and voila, Plasma 6 was running before my eyes. And immediately I was like, no way. And the Duet was like, way. <laughs> so I started running my checklist of what worked and what didn't out of the box. I mean, touchscreen, keyboard and touchpad, including touchpad gestures. Check. Okay, but what about style support? Oh, um, check. <laughs> Pen pressure levels? Check. I could just open external and start writing without missing a bit. Even better, the palm rejection worked much better compared to Chrome OS, rendering this as an actually good device for note taking on the go. Next up is connectivity. Wi-Fi? Check. Bluetooth? Check. All systems go. Okay, but what about uh, tablet mode support and such? Most devices fall, fail here. Well, not this one. Not only does touchscreen work out of the box, But when detaching the keyboard, this tablet will immediately enter tablet mode, meaning that all the icons become bigger and easier to click, and auto-rotation just works. Can you stop? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Auto-rotation just works. For some reason, though, this shipped without any touchscreen gesture out of the box, but as soon as I set one up in settings, I could access the overview and drag and drop windows around in the blink of an eye. Switching between desktops with three fingers also works. Finally, for tablet mode, the virtual keyboard does come pre-installed, but again, it's disabled out of the box. I'm not sure why. As soon as you do enable it, it works perfectly, and you can't um, you can sorry toggle it on and off in the system tray. So check, check, and check. I feel like these messages are pretty representative of the emotion I was going through. I was just like, whoa, this actually works? I can't believe it. And Julie's like, dude, I told you. <laughs> Battery life is also fantastic. Though this is a used device and I'm always keeping it full brightness, uh, I was even running various tasks in the background. The battery applet would nonetheless regularly show 10 to 12 hours estimated lifespan. I will have to do some testing to see how that translates in real life usage, but it already sounds great. Also, if you close it, it goes to sleep. I, okay, so I had not used this device for four days before writing this review, I was busy, and it only lost about 25% charge since Sunday, so, which is roughly 6% a day. 
or a battery drain of 0.25% an hour out of the box. If this does not sound exciting, my main device, this one, drains 25% in a few hours. It has a terrible battery, but nonetheless pretty impressive for the duet. So this is where I started noticing a few issues. Firstly, the webcam is not supported. If you know anything about making Linux devices run on these ARM devices, you already, uh, are, you're already aware that this applies to almost any device, as sad as it might be. Secondly, no audio output is recognized. I've been told that this is supposed to work, so it might be just my setup that's broken, but still I'm trying to evaluate this laptop out of the box and I can't play audio, but headphones work just fine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the volume rockers on the device work out of the box too, the, the, there's no audio, but that's a nice detail that you can't rely upon on other devices, like my main one. The power button also does put the device on standby or shows the screen and you can wake it up pretty quickly. Finally, it seems like libinput is misconfigured a bit and I can only trigger four finger gestures sometimes. Other times it starts scrolling instead. This is not amazing, but it could probably be fixed too. But apart from these few issues, the only one that we, of which that can't be solved is the webcam. This is a perfectly working device that I could use to run any Linux application like Inkscape, take notes with a pen, compile KDE to do development, write articles, yada yada. But would I want to do those things? Like how's the device? It has come with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is not plenty, but good enough for me. And as Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 plus a Qualcomm Adreno as the GPU. This is probably the only weak spot of the device. It's overall a bit laggy and, you know, it won't perform power intensive tasks very well. According to CPU Monkey, my main device, again, this Minis Forum, has roughly five times better uh, single core uh, performance and three times higher score in G Geekbank. Geekbench, I guess. To be clear, this does not render the Duet unusable by any means, it's just not a very fast laptop. However, it does pack a few punches here and there. Firstly, it has a gorgeous, and I mean gorgeous, 13 inches full HD OLED display. It's bright, the bezels are very slim, and it's a joy to use and watch content with. Yeah. My biggest ever, ever regret was to accidentally scratch the display on the top left corner. Yeah, I'm so annoyed by this and I'm also kind of tempted to just go ahead and buy an entirely new one since they're very cheap anyway. Like, look at that. Another upside is that it's quite thin, small and lightweight. Uh, it only weighs about 700 grams and it's seven millimeters thick, which is actually less than my phone. When you use it as a tablet, it feels like it's meant to be a tablet. My, again, Minis Forum is always a bit too big to use comfortably and has some excessive screen bezels, not a fan. This one, perfect. The device does not come with a pen holder, but you can easily print one with any tr uh, 3D printer and that works pretty well. Finally, and this is my biggest design criticism, the keyboard is good, but it lays flat on the table. I would so much prefer for it to actually magnetically attach under the screen at a, to stay at a given angle. So what's missing? Why am I not using this as my main and only device? webcam and performance aside. Well, uh, what I did not mention is that so far, I'm, everything I'm using is actually in a live session from the USB, you probably noticed in the video. It, it's nice and it works, but apparently I did mess up a step of the installation process. It looks like Chrome S wanted to do some system upgrade when I tried to install post-market OS on the device. So now when I try to boot from internal storage, I get a message, your device is being updated, but it it can't update. So that fails and that throws me back at the bootloader. Sad, but I'm working on it. <laughs> if you consider that this is something that you can get again for a few hundred bucks, even less than that, 
depending on where you live. Yes, there's also that. It's honestly a steal. And I'm seriously happy that I bought this device and as soon as I can fix the booting problem, I can't wait to use it to do research, write articles and do some development on the go. And not it, note taking. Lately, I quite dislike my main minis forum. So this is definitely my new favorite Linux -ish laptop right now. I think I can shut it down now. <laughs> shut 